Hello and welcome to East Heights United Methodist Church and our online worship experience. Wherever you are and however you may be viewing this service, we truly hope that you're blessed by our time together. We're so glad you're here. 
Will you join me now for our call to worship? God's greatness is wondrous to behold. Everywhere we look, we can see the imprint of God. From the highest mountains to the crashing waters of the sea, God's greatness stands for all to see. God's greatness can be within the human heart. Let us honor and praise God with acts of loving kindness and compassion. Amen. Well, now let's turn our attention to Pastor Kim, who has a special message for our children. Well, hi, kids. I am so excited to get to see you today and to talk to you about my mirror. (laughs) Yeah, maybe you have a mirror close by, too. When you look at the mirror, um, do you see your grandma's eyes or maybe you see your your dad's curly hair. Um, maybe you see a person who is a hard worker, just like your grandpa was a hard worker. I am talking about all of those things that you can see in your mirror. Maybe you've heard people say about you. You have your grandma's eyes. You have your dad's hair. You have your grandpa's hard work ethic. Maybe you can sing just like your aunt. Have you ever heard some of those things said? Yes, yes. Well, today we are talking about All Saints Day. That's what today is. And we are lifting up the people who have gone before us, who are now in heaven with Jesus, who've impacted our faith especially and impacted our lives. Now, you will sometimes see me in front of my bookshelf here, and this is probably one of my most treasured, my most treasured um, frames. On this side, I have my grandma Johnson, who is now in heaven. And I also have my grandma Dickerson, both amazing ladies who have impacted my faith so much. And I'm guessing there are some people in your life as well. Now, I have to say that when they passed away, I was terribly sad. Has that happened to you? Yes, you've lost somebody in your life. And it was really, really sad. Um, Do you know that even Jesus in the Bible was sad? And we read Jesus wept when he lost his good friend named Lazarus. Have you heard of that story? Yeah. Now, Jesus was able to go and to be with his friend Lazarus and actually tell him to rise and to live again. And I have to say, there have been some times when people have passed away in my life that I've wished Jesus could do that for But I know that they are now living eternal life with God in heaven. And that's that's honestly even better. I hope that this week you will get a mirror. This is your activity for the day, okay? Get a mirror. Maybe go over to your parents and say, hey, who do I look like? Who has made an impact on my life? Who um, do I work like? Who do I maybe sing like? So that you can be thinking about all of those saints that have gone before you and then maybe share some very special memories about those saints with them. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for our faces. Thank you for the memories of those we love. Help us to see them and see you in our hearts and know your promise of eternal life. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I also hope you'll stick around to hear these announcements. Here's a look at what's happening at East Heights. For a full list of events and activities, check your inbox for our e-note or visit our website. Please wear your mask and join us in the church parking lot on Saturday, November 7th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon to prepare our flower beds and plant tulips for the fall. You're encouraged to bring your favorite garden tools. Refreshments will be provided and will socially distance as we work. Fill a bag for Thanksgiving. Your donations will be given to the United Methodist Open Door and to our Jefferson Thrive and Family Promise families. Visit our website for a full list of grocery items. Your financial gifts are welcome. Monetary donations are due by November 8th. Filled bags are due by November 15th. You can drop off your bag at the church trailer between 10 a.m. and 12.15 p.m. or during office hours that week. 
The annual church conference will be held Sunday, November 15th at 2 p.m. via Zoom. The agenda will include 2021 church goals, election of officers, endowment fund action, and acceptance of conference ministry and mission funds. A Zoom link will be provided a few days prior to the meeting. We're still planning to have our turkey dinner on Sunday, November 22nd. While we cannot gather together, we still want to share this meal with you. Meals will be available for carryout that day following worship. We'll have a drive through system set up to have your carryout meals brought to you. Order forms will be available the first week of November. Proceeds benefit our youth ministry and mission. Please continue your financial support of the ministries of our church. You can give your tithes and offerings online, or you can mail a check directly to us. We appreciate your generosity and support of East Heights UMC, where we seek to love God, love neighbor, and serve the world. COVID-19 virus has impacted our lives in a variety of ways but it has especially affected our healthcare workers. They are on the front lines dealing with this virus daily and doing their very best to help the sick recover while trying to stay healthy themselves. Recently, our Community Life Ministry delivered over 260 handwritten cards along with baskets of gum and candy and mints to healthcare workers at the Select Specialty Hospital at the Via Christi St. Francis campus and also at Wesley Medical Center's ICU and emergency room staff. This has to be a very stressful and challenging time to be working in those conditions. And we hope that this small gesture from our church will lift the spirits of those who read the cards from our members and enjoy a mint or a piece of candy as they take a break from a very busy and stressful day. You see, when you send your tithes and offerings to the church, you participate in acts of kindness like this one and so many others that we try to do in our church to live out that call to love God, to love our neighbor, and serve the world. I want to thank you for the many ways you support the mission and ministry of our church. Together, we are doing good things, helping to share the light and love of Jesus Christ in our community and our world. Will you pray with me now? Lord, we pray this day for all healthcare workers who risk their lives to care for those dealing with the virus and other illnesses. We lift up the doctors, nurses, and all medical professionals who work alongside the sick and the suffering. Give them courage, Lord, and peace, even as they put their lives on the line in the process. Strengthen them in mind, body, and spirit, and encourage them even when their efforts may seem to fall short. Lord God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have given us life and granted us wisdom and blessed us with your love and presence. You care for us and provide for our needs. And so with grateful hearts, we present our offerings to you. May these gifts breathe life into our church and its ministries and be a visible sign of your ongoing presence in our community. We pray now in the name of Jesus, and together we say amen.
Today, as we observe All Saints Day, we celebrate and give thanks for those who have sought to follow the teachings of Jesus and live their lives in a way that reflected their faith. We recognize that these saints were not perfect. They were human and they were faithful. Saints are just people like you and I who are trying to listen to God's word and live out God's call. This is the communion of saints that we speak of in the Apostles' Creed. That fellowship of believers that reaches beyond time and place, even beyond death. Remembering the saints who have helped extend and enliven God's kingdom is what All Saints Day is about. And on this day of saints, we light a candle. We light a candle to honor and remember those who built our families who sacrificed for our well-being, who built up our church, who braved the storm, who fought the good fight and touched our lives in a meaningful way, those whom we love but will see no more. The light before us is a reminder that their memory lives on. Will you pray with me? Lord God of all people, of all time, we are here in your presence during this time of remembrance. Lord, we honor those who have finished their race and have received their reward. Today, we look back and remember the saints who have brought our communities to this time and place, those we hold dear in our hearts. As people of faith, we not only look back and remember their presence and impact on our lives, but we also look forward. We look forward to the reward in which they already share. We look forward to the tomorrow in which death and crying will be no more. We look forward to the fulfillment of your promise for us all. Hear us now, Lord, as we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and together we say, Amen.
I was a freshman in high school, I decided to try out for the football team. Now, a number of my teammates had already played tackle football in leagues like we have in many of our communities today, but our middle school only played flag football. It's not a shock then when I say that I was pretty far behind the other guys and had a lot of catching up to do. I kept at it though and started to see some progress and I think my coach did too. Coach McCauley played college football and he knew the game inside and out. He really did help me become a better football player over time, but what he did for me goes far beyond what I could ever learn on a field. When it came time for us to select a number that would go on our jerseys, Coach McCauley said he wanted me to wear his number, 51. Now, Hall of Fame players have worn this number for many years, but at the time, that really didn't matter to me. What did matter was that coach saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. He honored me with his number, and I wore it with a sense of pride and gratitude. It made a very big difference in my life. Has there been a time in your life when someone honored you through words or actions a gesture that made a significant difference in your life? You know, most of us have been taught to respect our elders and offer our seat on a crowded bus or open the door for someone. Showing honor to older generations is about manners, but it's also a natural human impulse that recognizes that one day you and I will all be elderly and we hope younger generations will show us the same love and care that we showed generations before us. Offering a person a seat on a crowded bus or opening the door for someone, even giving your jersey number to a wayward freshman. You see, these are all aspects of honor. However, the Bible teaches us that honor, honoring someone goes even deeper than that. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to honor the human family, the humanity of all individuals, to treat each other the way we would want to be treated, to see others as God sees us. Sadly, this aspect of honor is a virtue that seems to have been forgotten by many in our society. And during the month of November, we will be exploring core Christian virtues like honor, loyalty, integrity, and gratitude. I believe that if we are mindful about incorporating these virtues into our own lives, they will lead us to respond to the Bible's call to moral and ethical behavior and make a very positive impact on our families, our community, and ultimately our country. Let's take a look at a couple of definitions so we will be operating on the same perspective. You see, virtue is defined as Behavior showing high moral standards, a quality considered morally good or desirable in a person. As followers of Jesus, we are called to live by higher moral standards. We are to be a people of loyalty, integrity, gratitude, and honor. Living this way shows that the presence of Jesus has made an impact in our lives. In 1 Peter 1 verse 15, Peter calls believers to be holy just as God is holy. So a virtuous person displays high moral standards that points us to the very nature of God. Well, now let's consider the virtue of honor. Honor is defined as recognition of importance or value, respect or veneration for someone. It can be a feeling of deep admiration for someone in response to their abilities, their qualities, or their achievements. When Coach McCauley gave me his number, it was an honor to wear it, and it made me want to be a better football player in the process. That one gesture made a lasting impact on my life. As we turn to our scripture reading, we'll see that the Bible is clear on how we are called to honor and respect one another. And today we'll be exploring one verse from a letter written to believers who are living in a region that today we call Turkey. First Peter can be understood as a handbook written for Christians living in a hostile world. The purpose of this letter was to encourage followers of Jesus to face persecution and live in relationship with other believers 
in such a way that the true grace of Jesus Christ would be revealed in that community. As I read this passage, listen to it in the context of the presidential election and the way our country has been responding to different political views, how there's so much contention. Listen to it from that perspective. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. In this section, Peter offers specific ways Christians are called to live and behave differently in the world. This passage offers us a four-point summary of Christian citizenship. First, Christians are to respect everyone. People don't have value because they agree with us. They have value because they are humans created in the image of God. Believers should be conscious of the fact that each person has sacred worth and not be viewed as merely Democrat or Republican. Second, Christians are called to do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Our love for one another serves as a witness to Christ's love for all people. God's family members should love one another. Third, Christians are to fear God. Now, the verb fear does not mean to be in terror, but it does mean to show awe and respect that leads to obedience. Our respect for each other flows or comes out of our respect for God. Fourth, believers are called to honor the king. And this means we are called to respect or honor all people, especially to give honor to those God has placed in authority. And this means that we pray for our political leaders, even those we don't agree with. Honoring all people, showing deep love for believers, reverence for God, and honoring those in authority reveals to the world that Christ is in us. It would be safe to say that as a country, we've lost respect for the entire election process. Our candidates don't show even a small degree of honor for one another, and that sense of dishonor has permeated through our nation and how many of us relate with one another. We don't seem to be able to have a conversation about politics without it devolving into personal attacks. 1 Peter 2.17 calls us to act honorably, respectfully, and compassionately toward each other. Let's challenge ourselves and our elected officials to be reasonable adults, to act decently toward each other, work on the things that can be agreed on, and lead our country on a path where our children aren't tasked with cleaning up the mess we've left behind. We all need to do our part by living lawfully, honorably, respectfully, and compassionately toward one another as well. This election means a lot to our country, and many of us are heavily, heavily invested in the outcome. At the end of this election cycle, many of us are going to be very happy with the results, and others are going to be very deeply disappointed. Regardless of which candidate we cast our vote for, I pray we don't forget an important truth. Presidents will come and go. Some lead our country effectively, and others not as well. But no matter who is elected, one thing will not change. God reigns. He is our creator and our source of hope. With God as king, we can face uncertainty with the promise that whatever our circumstances might be, God is with us and he will accomplish everything that is in his plan for our world, our country, and even our lives. While we have reason to hope in elections, elected officials, laws and governments, and our nation, remember that our ultimate trust and hope does not rest in these. So whether we end up happy or sad or indifferent about the election results, may we all put our trust and hope in God who reigns as our King. And win or lose, let us honor one another through our words and our actions. Will you pray with me? Holy God, as election day approaches, we pray for your spirit of love and peace to dwell in our homes 
and workplaces, in our houses of worship, in our polling stations or voting booths, that your healing presence would resound through broken places in our government, sends us love that frees us from hatred and bitterness toward one another, sends us power that shows honor for one another and protects human dignity, send us grace that we would be a people of hope and unity, send us your love and grace. We ask that you hear us now as we pray in the risen name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Well, friends, we're so glad you joined us for worship today. If you've been encouraged and blessed by this experience, please consider sharing it with a family member or friends. And before you go, I offer you this blessing. Go in confidence, knowing that God goes with you to give you words of hope, to give you words of comfort and peace. May God's love flow through you to all you meet. Amen. And we'll end our time together with our Ad Astra Quartet singing, Oh, when the saints go marching in. Have a great week. Oh, when the saints, when the saints go, marching, go marching in. Oh, when the saints, saints go, go marching in. in. Oh, how I want to be in that number, yeah. When the saints go marching, saints go marching in. Oh, when the sun, when the sun refuses to shine. When the sun, shine, oh, when the sun, sun refuses to shine. Oh, how I want to be in that everlasting number when the sun Refuse to shine, shine the chords begin to ring. Oh, when the chords begin to ring, oh, how I want to be in that everlasting number when the chords begin to ring. <laughs> When the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, how I want to be in that number right now when the saints.